All right, so welcome everybody. And today we've got Ibifuro Jami uh, today with us. Ibifuro is a PhD uh, student of engineering education, and she's recently published a paper in journal Sustainability, handed in her thesis. So I wanted to chat to Ibifuro a little bit more about, you know, how she's achieved those goals. And uh, she will probably be able to give you some really useful tips as well. Um, how she overcame some of her some of her issues. So welcome, Ibi Furo, and thanks for coming on. Thank you so much, Mary, for having me. It's great. It's great to have you here. So you know, first of all, congratulations once again, Ibi Furo. Very very happy for you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy for myself. <laughs> you should be absolutely. It's a huge achievement. Can you tell us a little bit more, like about the paper and how it feels right now after you've submitted it? Well. Um... I don't know, it's just an overwhelming um, feeling, um, especially um, because it, I had not submitted a, a paper that was accepted in any journal before, prior to this time. So I, I feel so much happy and fulfilled. Like I've been getting um, um, well, calls or emails asking, you know, um, to work with me. I've been invited to conferences already. Uh, in the US, so, and I know it's because of the, I had to post, you know, promote the paper and all that uh, on ResearchGate, uh, Acad Academia, uh, and, and uh, I've had a lot of views on my paper and I'm really excited uh, about it. Awesome, That's that sounds that sounds really good. So like, can you tell us a bit more about the, the, the paper itself and the, and the journal that you published it in? Okay. Um, so I uh, published a paper in a, a sustainability journal, it's a high impact factor journal. And um, prior to this time, uh, I had submitted a paper before, uh, which was rejected. So this is my first time that my paper was accepted in a, a high impact factor journal. And um, it has to do with my work on, um, on, on the covering and the process of how sustainability things influence women's car engineering career choice. And um, it was accepted in the, in the first instance. It was accepted in the first instance. I went through a, a few um, corrections and it was published uh, within three weeks. Mm -hmm. All right. And what made you decide on, on that journal in particular? You know, because you're okay. saying that it's, you know, it's quite a high impact journal. And I suppose a lot of PhD students in your previous situations would be maybe a bit scared, I suppose, to, to aim for something high impact. Yeah, I was scared initially. I was really scared. In fact, I had choices. I had, um, I, I, I wanted to go for a lower impact factor because I had not done this before successfully. And, uh, but um, with the support of Marek, you and uh, the program. Um, I was encouraged. I attended your your um, webinar on how to write uh, papers successfully, and it was really enlightening for me. I, I understood from that program that you have to look at the focus. The focus of the paper journal should align with your work, and then also look at the, the impact factor. Also look at the turnaround time for the journal to respond. I learned a little uh, respond. So I learned a lot of things from that webinar that you uh, organized and I started writing the paper. And um, um, I decided on that journal because it was really aligned with my the focus of my paper. Though it was high impact factor, because of all that I have learned so far from your program, I felt that I could give it a shot, that I felt I was in a good place. You know, I, my, my writing had improved. So I just thought, why not give it a go? And, and the first instance, I was very happy. Mm -hmm. That's that's awesome. And I also saw that it's an open access uh, journal. So why why did you decide to go for something open access? Yeah, I just wanted visibility. I wanted um, high visibility of my work because it was firstly it's the first work that I'm doing that is accepted, and of course it would um, the high visibility will also impact on my thesis because um, I needed to get that. Um, review from feedback from experts in the field. So um, I decided to go for open access to get that high visibility, which I've already just um, a few weeks that I published. My visibility is really high. Like I said before, 
I've been invited to conferences in the United States. I've been uh, receiving emails to collaboration to collaborate with different groups. So that that's really very important. Mm -hmm. All right, that sounds that sounds really good. And you know, if we kind of you know backtrack a little bit, we were talking about you know the paper that you've just published. But if we backtrack a little bit, you know, a couple of months back when when you started the the program, can you tell us a little bit more what you know what was it, what your situation was like? back then and what kind of things were you struggling with as a PhD student? Okay, thank you. Um, well, the place I was before joining uh, the Academic English Now program is a unique one which um, may not be similar to many people, or many PhD students on the program. And I believe that it's going to help. And I, I believe there are more women out there or more people out there in my situation. Uh, it's a unique one in that I, I suppose that we finished my uh, PhD study because I had written up my thesis, I submitted um, the same for my Viva. I subsequently went through my Viva and got a massive major correction. And I, I was given 12 months to make this correction. Mind you, prior to my Viva, I had written two successful conference papers, but one journal paper that was rejected. So I was in a very terrible situation before I joined the program. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so how, you know, what, what sort of thoughts or feelings were going through your head at, at that time? Because I imagine, yeah, when you get major correction for your thesis and a 12 month deadline and your paper gets rejected, that's, that's not a good place to be in. So do you still remember how that felt or? Well, I can, I can never forget how it felt because I was really depressed. I was really depressed. I, you know, I was expressing um, 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 this syndrome. I was questioning myself, questioning my abilities, you know, until I uh, had to search for, I had major challenges. And one of the major challenges I had was that my examiners highlighted that I needed um, support, an expert, from an expert that would guide me in putting together my work uh, in a manner that is up to the standard. And then also, I needed to learn how to write succinctly and structure writing logically. Uh, finally, I needed to successfully um, write and publish a journal paper you know, to get that feedback from experts from the field. So, uh, I, because of this, I, you know, started searching rigorously for um, help. I, I saw a few or uh, lots of programs that claim that they help PhD students. I saw a lot I, because I was really desperate. I needed that help, I needed that support. And however, none of these programs stood out for me until I um, read about the Academic English Now program on Facebook. Initially, I was a bit skeptical until after speaking with you, I was convinced that this program was what I needed to get back on track and to mm -hmm. address the issues that I was facing. All right, so what convinced you if you were you know, initially skeptical? Well, um, I first of all, I looked at the, um, the, the structure of the program. Uh, you sent me some modules you know, just to see the way the program, the expectations, what I would achieve at the end of the program. And um, even if I had not tested it before, I read um, the reviews from others that have passed through the program, and I saw that they were successful, and uh, I needed that kind of support. So I didn't even know before I subscribed what I was getting to the structure because I didn't have the full picture of the modules and the structure, but I just was convinced because of the 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 the, the deliverables that were going that I was going to um, achieve at the end of the day and the reviews from uh, student PhD students that are already in the program or have gone through the program. So until I started the program and then I never really it into it. Mm -hmm. All right. Awesome. And so, you know, if we if we look at your progress, you know, your thesis needed major correction and your first paper was rejected. Now you um, submitted your thesis and you published a paper in a high impact journal, which seems to be opening some really nice doors of opportunity for you. So like how how did we achieve that? 
transformation. Can you kind of maybe walk us through like what, what happened and what we did step by step to to help you? Um, so um, first of all, um, it was an easy journey. It was really hectic or contribute all I needed to learn and address in a short time. However, the content of um, the program modules and instruction helped me and help me to get to the point where I am now, which is to, to uh, basically publish in a high impact factor journal and also to submit my thesis. And but basically my major problem prior to this time was not, I wasn't good in academic writing. So the modules in the programs definitely helped me to address that. I'm now able to structure my writing logically, substantially using right academic phrases. So the modules, the way it's structured, um, you have um, different um, modules that address each aspect of your thesis from the introduction to the conclusion. So it, it, it's, not a, it's not like a situation where someone is there to write it for you. You're learning in the process in terms of the fact that there are exercises after each module that you have to practice. And as you're practicing, it helps with the writing. So that, that, um, that those exercises, those constant writing and following the module on how to write your introduction, your literature review, your methodology, it really helps me and structure my thesis and then also write the thesis. Right, great. And, you know, there was also a lot of feedback and, you know, and, and regular coaching that, that, that we did. So how, how did that come in yeah. and, and help you? So the English Now um, program is one that is more like a support or a partner that you are working, working with. So it, it's not just the modules. So there were feedback. There's also a, a strong community of PhD students or researchers that, that is there where you use it as a sounding board full time, you know, and get advice. And then um, the founder, which is Sumare, that you are always there to guide through the process. When you have issues, you know, there's this constant feedback and your availability and constant feedback really helps them in the process. All right, great. So what would you say like for you has been like the major kind of transformation or lesson that, you, that you've learned during the last year while we were working together? Well, uh, for me, the major, because my major problem was uh, uh, I was not able to write um, uh, academically a good, an ac a good academic piece. Um, for me, that major transformation was the fact that I got to the point where I could write seamlessly. You know, it was a chore before it was a struggle to write. You have the ideas, you have the results. So how do you put it together was my major problem. You know, how do you how do you, you know, um, communicate your ideas, communicate your findings, communicate your results, communicate your methodology, you know, and all that. So it was difficult. It was really difficult, you know. And then, but through this program, I was able to use, you know, there are templates, also there are templates that you could use, you know, that makes it easy or that made it easy for me. So you have the template and then you put in, you, it's already programmed for you to use it in your writing and then you have demos that you could also uh, uh, fall back to so it, it was it really helped me and at this point i can say that i can write subsequently I, I i can write a good academic piece and it's, it's evident in the um uh, acceptance of my paper that was awesome so what's you know what advice or suggestions you know now that you know what you know and you know you've you've learned how to write papers, what, what advice would you give to PhD students who perhaps you know right now are in the situation that you were in, you know, where maybe the papers are rejected or they're getting like really bad comments on the thesis? Um, what, what would you advise to them? Thank you. Uh, the content is very overwhelming. Good enough, you know, you will question yourself, your ability, but that's not the right place to be in my experience. So um, when you get such feedback, it's just a way to improve your work. That's what I have learned in this journey. It's just an opportunity to improve your work. So 
And my advice to fellow PhD students who are struggling with the same problem are just starting off their PhD study, they don't, they don't even have this problem yet, is to find such support in time. And this will, uh, will really help them make the PhD journey a little bit easier and less stressful than just looking alone you know, and you don't have much support. And then you're not, you're not, you're not tested, you're not tested your, uh, your, your skills or you've tested um, the work you're doing. Uh, the, you know, but when you have that support, you are able to finish on time. And then in fact, my, my major regret is I didn't find academic English now in time. Because if I did, I wouldn't have been in the issue, in the issue that I'm. Mm -hmm. All right. So, you know, once again, congratulations on that on that paper. And can I ask you well, what's what's next now? You mentioned some conferences, you know. So what's what's the next goal? Um, so my next goal basically is to completely finish my PhD, which um, I'm waiting for my examiners to look at my work and then examine me. And that's for once that is done, um, if, uh, I'm looking at attending these conferences that I'm invited to that of course I align with the focus of my research and also doing more research. Like I, I, I feel more energized, I feel more capable to write and I'm still, I'm already writing the second paper right now. And so it, it's a lot easier when you see that you, you have learned these things, you've been proven, you've been tested, you've been accepted. So it's, it, once you push that first paper through, it's a lot easier because you just follow through the, the same process and the same um, thing to do. So that's it.